Hey everyone and welcome to VFX Y once again. So today's video is going to be a very interesting video in which we are going to see how we can use sequence paint for doing any kind of cleanup inside Nuke. So without any delay, let's get started. Okay, before starting anything, I would like to tell you that it's not possible for anyone to do a very uh, neat and uh, clean cleanup uh, in 15 minutes. So for this example, the process will be very quick and dirty. Just for demonstration purposes, I'm doing that. Cleanup or any kind of visual effect related work is very time taking and uh, the more time you are going to devote to your work, the best quality you can achieve. So let's jump to screen. So as uh, you can see over here, I have a footage over here in which uh, a character is passing by and also camera is moving. So it's a bit complicated short to do that, but let's see how we can do that. I am not going to touch tracking since already I have covered multiple times. So for this example, I have already tracked my footage and we are ready for cleanup purposes only, right? So I'm going to take a, a, a roto paint node very quickly, I'm going to take a roto paint node and in roto paint node, as I'm going to connect my background, I have another input. It's called background one, right? So for this example, since we are going to use sequence painting, so I'll be needing my background one. So same thing, I'm going to connect my background or my scan plate to background one as well. What will happen? I'll let you know. So here, as you can see, I have uh, multiple tools over here. So we are going to use clone tool shortcut is C, right? And in clone tool, we have multiple options over here as well. So for this example, I'm going to put hardness zero. I will suggest you to put hardness zero in any cases if you're doing any kind of cleanup, right? Okay, so hardness is zero. Now here is the trick. So I need to take source from uh, a multiple frames, right? So it's a bit confusing, but I'm going to take source from multiple frames in current video. So for this, what I need to do, I need to change FG to BG1. Apart from that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch on my onion scanning and what it will be doing, it will be showing the overlap of foreground and background, right? So I'm going to switch it on. Nothing is happening over here. Why? Because we need to mention on which frame my source is, right? So suppose that I'm going to paint over 100 and I want to take my reference on 100 frame number 120. So might be 100 plus 20. So I need to uh, mention 120, right? So what will happen? My reference frame will be 120 and I'm, I'll be painting on frame number 100, right? So we are going to use this technique and we are going to paint it. So I'm not going to paint it on frame number 129. So I'm going to paint it uh, somewhere uh, in middle frames like 201 or 210 probably. And for this, my reference will be, uh, my reference will be might be frame number 175 or 160. Right. So I'm going to paint frame number 210. Right. And frame my reference will be 160. Right. So I need to put minus 50 cause I am going to take a reference which is behind my current frame. Right. So you need to calculate that frame uh, range as well. So here, as you can see here, I'm getting some controls. So if I'm going to put it this way. So I'm going my reference frame. And if I'm going to put over this side, so my current frame will be visible. So as I can see, I'm having bit uh, motion blur over here. So it not recommended to take a source if you have motion blur. But for this example, I'm going to take it because we don't have much time, but it's not advisable to take a reference which is in motion blur, right? So first thing first, we need to shift my anger point. So I'm going to shift my anchor point by holding control and let me figure it out or let me arrange my reference. So we need to align my reference. Of course, it's not aligning. So I'm going to align it very precisely, right? I can nudge by using numeric keypads. 
right so let me check if it's no so probably this will work so now i'm ready with my uh, referencing and i'm uh, aligning so i'm going to paint it over here and just you need to take care about that the pattern should be matching right so since i have aligned it properly then my patterns are matching very quickly as you can see over here my patterns are matching and easily i'm taking source from different frame and i'm painting on different frame something like that right if you want to paint on multiple frames you can go ahead and you can use multi-cam projection setup as well if you are not aware about multi-cam projection setup already i made a very advanced cleanup video and i will recommend you to go and check uh, link will be in descriptions below so after that i'm i'm going to take a note called frame hold and i'm going to hold my frame number 210 right so i'm going to hold my frame 210 here i'm going to type 210 right and i'm going to put one over here so i have my clean plate over here as you can see it's pretty nicely done right although it's quick and dirty now let's do my projection setup so for projection what i'll be needing here you can see easily see i have my uh, card setup as well i'm not going to deep dive into tracking and card setup already i have done multiple times so you can go and you can check any my cleanup video or any my uh, camera tracking video so for this i'm going to copy my both the cards scene node camera node and scanline render node so i'm going to copy it and i'm going to paste it over here right apart from this i'll be needing another node which will be a cam project 3d so project 3d in project 3d we need a camera input and a plate which we are going to project on card so camera will be this but this should be a static camera so i'm going to copy this frame hold as well because you need to keep it in mind that you need to project on that particular frame on which you have created your clean plate so you need to keep it in mind so i'm going to frame hold my camera as well and my camera will be this my camera will be this and my projection will be this but you need to take care about that we are not going to project whole things right entire things so we need to mask it out so i'm going to take a roto node and let me figure it out from which place to which place i want to project so probably i'm going to project from uh, this place to this place keep it in mind you want to project on multiple frames you can go ahead and you can use the multi cam projection setup as well so for this example i'm not going to use that but it will be recommended that if you are going to use it so i'm going to take a node called merge and i'm going to mask it let me arrange my node as well so mask will be the operation and i'm going to project this and i'm going to project on these two cards if you want to do a uh, projection on separate separate cards so you want key uh, your plane projection will be on separate card or separate setup you can go uh, do that or this wall projection should be on different card on different setup you can go ahead but i am going to use it in same uh, project 3d node after connecting my cards to my project 3d also you need to take care about that your render camera should be the tracked camera so if i'm going to render with my this camera so what i'm getting i'm getting my uh, this result and if you can see we have same camera movement which we had in our footage so what else we need to do just we need to take a merge node and this will be my foreground and my original footage will be my background let me arrange it and if i'm going to see from this merge you can easily see we have our clean plate ready let's play it and let's check what we are having okay here you can see easily you can see we have a very good amount of cleanup but although we have few 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 problems we are getting we are having this problem so it's not a big problem since we are doing this for demonstration purposes 
if I'm going to do it for production level, so I need to take care about uh, rotation of my cleanup and tracking and all, but although we can fix it, how we can fix it, just go over here, just go over here and I can uh, easily, I can select, I can grab this and I can hit E on keyboard just to feather a little. And if I want, I can do, I can take a transform node over here and in transform easily, I can nudge and I can fix it. So there are very, very uh, quick fixes. And if you want, you can animate that thing as well. So this is a very quick and dirty way to uh, do cleanup. So if you want to use this technique, if you want to create your clean plate inside Nuke by using different, different frames as a, a source or as a reference, so you can go ahead and you can use onion skinning technique or sequence printing technique in Nuke itself and you can do your cleanups and you can enhance your skills as well. So I hope this video is uh, helpful to you. And if you feel that this video is helpful to you, please don't forget to like this video, share this this video and if you are new to this channel please don't forget to subscribe this is vfx5 signing off have a good day